Um, I'll just speak from my heart. The body of Christ lost a gift in the person of um, evangelist Osinachi. And a soul is so precious to Jesus Christ. And so is ours. A soul is precious to Jesus Christ. And um, I pray that the Lord will hold our children together. I pray that the Lord will erase every traumatic experience they have from witnessing abuse so that they don't replicate sin. In Jesus' name, I want to speak to us women. Um, I want to beg us to find our identity in Christ. Please find your identity in Christ Jesus. Jesus died for you. Jesus shed his blood for you. Jesus shed the, his blood for the world and you are among. So find your identity in Christ Jesus. The Holy Ghost living inside of you is not a woman Holy Ghost. It is the same spirit that is in Christ if you are born again. So please find your identity in Christ. Marriage is not your identity. Um, good looks is not your identity. Um, you know, your shape is not your identity. Um, our business is not our identity. Our identity is Christ Jesus. Our identity is Christ Jesus. So please, before you go into marriage, please, woman, man, find your identity in God. Know who you are in God. Know who you are in Christ. Because when you do, you have self-worth. Know who you are in Christ. You know, we've heard sermons. I, if I will be truthful, I've heard sermons, you know, over time. Not all people preach this, but I've heard sermons, you know, where we are told as women that, you know, we are crownless when we are not married. And so every woman is seeking to put a crown over her head because it looks like we are crownless. We are not covered because we don't have a husband. And so people are willing to settle for anything in the name of marriage and in the name of having a covering and a crown over their head. Jesus is your crown. Jesus is our crown. I mean, I'm saying this and you're thinking, oh, maybe she's against marriage. I'm not. Marriage is beautiful. I said it in one of the videos before that marriage is beautiful. We just have to do it the God way. We just have to do it his way, follow his way. That's the only way we'll enjoy marriage. Yes, marriage is beautiful, but it has to be done the God way. Right? It's not enough to just want marriage. That's why a lot of us are just, you know, looking for marriage to cover, you know, to find us. You find a woman wants to go to school and do a PhD and, you know, what she will hear is, is not yet, I mean, like, this is not what you should be thinking of. You shouldn't be thinking of PhD. You should be thinking of settling down, right? And so sometimes she drops her PhD, but the man can actually go, you know, to do his PhD, you know, wait till he's 40 and come to marry sometimes a 22, 25 year old girl. And which ordinarily should not be a bad thing, but the girl comes into your home and she's not able to blossom. The next thing you want to do is tame her. Like, I've heard that. You know, the funny thing is, even in the body, I have heard people say these things to me. 
like oh you're too strong oh you need to be tamed you need to be married so for them marriage is taming you need to be tamed and i'm like no i don't want to marry to be tamed i want to be i want to marry to be loved i want to marry to be taken care of i want to marry to have companion i want to marry to have a friend not to be tamed like a wild animal from the zoo i'm not i have self control the same self control that the lord is giving us all i have it so i'm not marrying so that you tame me i'm marrying so that i can be your friend and you can be my friend you can love me and i can love you that's why we are marrying and so it's not just marriage is not just for the sake of it i beg us women please and i beg the church please and I'm, i'm speaking truly from my heart please apart from some you know good men even in the body i know of people who just feels that i'm using myself as an example who just feels that you're too strong because i am operating in the gift and the power of the holy ghost i'm too strong because i am allowing the spirit of god use me i'm too strong i'm too you know um because i speak boldly the word of truth i'm too strong but i don't know what what i should be i don't know what i should be i should express the holy ghost in me so long as i'm not wicked so long as i'm kind so long as i speak from the place of love I'm not trying to prove how strong I am. I am just expressing the Holy Ghost. So please the church I even think that the church should forgive. I say this jokingly, but every time I say, it, you know, it makes sense to me again and again and again. I I I want to beg the church to forgive the woman for what happened at the garden. Jesus has forgiven her. Forgive the woman. Because the Bible says in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Anyone available will carry God. So forgive the woman. Let the woman express the god that is in them because these things trickle down into our marriages too i made a video the other time because i was led by the spirit of god to do so about marriage and i said that the lord made it very clear the holy spirit made it very clear that in ephesians 5 21 should be we should pay attention to 21 in order to see 22 23 24 25 you know become a reality we need to pay attention to 21 we need to prefer one another i said that and a lot of men came for me and said you know you're trying to twist scripture you're trying to say what you think and all of that anything that has two heads is a monster i believe that too but i don't believe that anymore and this is what i mean the holy ghost said to me god the father god the son god the holy spirit they are one that scripture in ephesians 5:21 they display it so we can learn from them The Holy Spirit is glorifying Jesus. Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit. 
So when the Holy Spirit is in front, Jesus steps back, God steps back so that he can do his work. When Jesus is in front, you know, the Holy Spirit steps back, God steps back. Same thing with when God is in front. And so, yes, the husband is the head of the home. But then, Scripture says, prefer one another. Submit to one another. Some of them even said things like, that Scripture in Ephesians 5.21 does not, wasn't speaking about marriage or godly relationship. It's speaking about the church. Okay. Let's assume that it is speaking about the church. When you marry that sister or that brother, do they stop being Christians? So if you can submit to one another as Christians, as the body, why can't you do that at home? Why can't you prefer one another at home? Why can't we do that? Why can't we love one another, respect one another, care for one another, cherish one another at home? We are still Christians. We don't stop being Christians when we get married. We can't see the manifestation of that marriage God is talking about if we don't learn to prefer one another. Submit to one another. So I beg you, just in case you have heard those sermons about, you know, you are, you are not, you cannot attain your um, spiritual destiny if you are not married. No. Jesus wasn't married. Paul wasn't married. I'm not saying to you to say, eh, uh-huh. Should be if they did not marry, why should I marry? That's not what I'm saying to you. I'm saying that marriage is not so that you will fulfill what God has called you to be. You can without marriage. Right? You can. But there is a blessing in marriage. Yes. But not just any marriage, godly marriage. So that you don't feel that you can't do anything for yourself until you're married. And those that have been preaching that gospel, please look at it again. Those that will say, you know, the man is, is your crown. If you don't have a crown, you don't, you are, you are exposed, you are open. But until they give me a crown, the Lord is my crown. Until the Lord gives me a crown. He is my crown. And so I, I have, I'm not going to be waiting on destiny because I'm waiting for my crown. I have to walk in destiny. You have to walk in destiny. Know who you are. Right? Because you have a crown. His name is Jesus Christ. And when he decides to give you that man... To be your friend, your companion, you know, you welcome that too. And trust me, godly marriage is beautiful. I do not want things like this to taint the heart of men, the heart of women, you know, against marriage. No, marriage that God created is beautiful it will remain beautiful i said that before we are the ones we are the ones that put katakata and wahala in it the marriage god created if we follow his principle is beautiful is meant to bring us peace and joy is meant to you know take some loneliness away So please, I beg us, I believe strongly that the Lord is uncovering, is healing his church. And in the process of healing, before healing will take place, he will uncover. We cannot cover up with bandage a, a rotten wound. 
What we do is we open it up, we clean the wound, we stitch it if need be, so that it can heal. And I believe that's what God is doing with his church. He's trying to give us an opportunity to get it right, to, um, you know, wherever we have gotten it wrong, to get it right. Wherever we have said it wrong, to say it right, according to scripture, not according to culture, not according to tradition, not according to what people want, but the scripture. Jesus is love. And so our men should reflect God. And that doesn't stop with the men. We, the women, too, should reflect God. If we say that our men should be a reflection of God, we should also be a reflection of God. The Bible says you shall have no other God. Your husband is a reflection of God. And so should you too be a reflection of God. I beg us. We are weak at the war front when our marriages are sick. We are weak at battle when our marriages are sick. So God is trying to heal marriages in the body so that it will flow into the world because creation is waiting. Creation is groaning. They are waiting for the manifestation of sons, both male and female. So please, and if you are in any abusive relationship, take it seriously. Don't overlook it. I, I say that in, in the hierarchy, if I can use the word of abuse, um, physical abuse is the, is the highest, right? But it starts from somewhere. Before it gets to physical abuse, when then somebody dies, it starts from verbal abuse. And how it works is the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy. When verbal abuse is being allowed and nothing is done about it, after a while, the person inflicting the pain, whether a man or a woman, in this case, in the relationship, when they are verbally abusing you and you do nothing about it and maybe you find a mechanism around it to cope with it what they do is they change gear they will change gear to emotional abuse and if you find a mechanism to cope with that too gear will be changed to sexual and then physical and then the other abuse you know so it is important to take verbal abuse seriously when you notice it talk about it go for counseling it is not okay go for counseling don't leave it because it will fester and it will become something else please the day physical abuse happened is not when it started it started with verbal with emotional with um sexual every other you know abuse before you know the physical abuse so please go for counseling because we have to treat ourselves with respect go for counseling if you're in your church talk to the church about it if the person involved whether it's a woman or the man because like i said abuse can come from both sides if it's a man or a woman, sometimes there are even workers in church. Go and talk about it. And don't keep quiet until something is done. Don't keep quiet. 
and if nothing is done take a break like i said take a break it is better you're alive to fix the marriage than be dead so please i beg us god will help us like i said god is healing the church because of what he has to do at this end time he's healing us he's reading our hearts of wickedness we are wicked he's reading our hearts of wickedness and replacing our heart our hardened heart with a heart of flesh until that happens that's when we will begin to see the fruit of the revival our hardened heart needs to be replaced with a heart of flesh and that way the revival will come now Please speak up if you are being abused. Please. God bless you. And God keep you and God give you wisdom. In Jesus name. Amen.